All the different things that we do here are relatively simple. They just look complex. That's just a testament to how clever, how good of a job the team did and make it work in a beautiful fashion. My name is Mikael Kasorinen. I'm the director of control and today we'll go through the Astray Maze. The first instance when we talked about the Astro Maze was actually in the um, synopsis of the game. It was a really simple idea at the time. The idea of this kind of a lock almost, a kind of a location in the world that stops your progression. Here we see uh, a concept uh, or drawing and this actually illustrates many different elements that uh, we were thinking about. And you can actually see a small entry over here about the maze. <laughs> and as you can see from the image, yeah, it's an early, early kind of a visualization of what the maze would be. I personally wanted it to be this kind of a labyrinth, and then there's this thing in the middle, and, and you need to kind of find your way through it. But as we went through it, looked at the story, I looked at kind of big parts and so on, it was clear that we need to shift our thinking towards it being more like an area that you have to get through. But you can see how we, we think about the context of things compared to other elements. So the maze was there to stop you from getting to the uh, dimensional research sector. You could come to this place, but early on, you don't really understand what it is or what it does. But there are a few hints of elements nearby. You can see over here, like Ahtis, uh, equipment, a bit of trash, and so on. It's a sign of things to come that you might not realize yet. So here we are, first time entering the maze, wondering what's going on uh, and what's happening. And, and the maze does this thing where it just redirects you back to where you started off from. At this point of the game, of course, you're wondering what this is. And I think it's great to do things like that. It's not something that we have really done in our games before. But there's this way to access and see things uh, that are big mysteries still, and, um, and leave it haunting the player a bit and, and so on, and then you'll know when the moment happens when you come back to it. But once you know that you need to go through it, you find a note from Ahti saying that, you know, it's under maintenance, weirdly enough. We come to Ahti, basically he gives us this tape recorder, uh, allows us to listen to music, so it turns out music is the key to get through the maze. Here we are back at the maze, ready to rock, but this time Jessie have tape recorder. She can start listening to the song. It made sense that we would use uh, the old gods of Osgood um, as, as the band. And that kind of started off the collaboration with Parts of the Fall, who, who are actually the band behind old gods of Osgood. We kind of worked with them before, so it was a natural thing for us to do and they are really good at what they do. Also in a technical sense, they can uh, work directly with our audio team and technical team to make sure that they establish the song in a way that allows our team to actually break it down in such a way that we can make the song adapt to the situation. And it's more complicated than what it sounds. Basically, we had to make sure that the song follows a certain kind of arc, goes through certain kind of motions, but at the same time, we need to be able to react to whatever the player is doing. He or she might stop at any given time, and the song has to kind of just work with that, whatever happens. Yet, at the same time, it needs to sound natural, like a normal song that we would expect to hear in a club or somewhere. So it couldn't break that immersion, it couldn't break that sense of illusion of what we are creating. And of course, part of this is a big reveal in a way that, hey, this is a connected universe. I mean, this is connecting directly to Alan Way. Damn. It's of the same band, but it sounds a bit different. It's a bit rougher and, and so on, a bit more energetic and, and brutal. Uh, so it feels right in the world that we're creating here today. And here you can see the, the structure of the maze and the kind of uh, flow through it. What's interesting is that when people play through it, it comes across as a complex flow. There's a lot of things happen, there's a lot of shifting, but the actual structure of the environment is fairly straightforward. And we had a very modular approach here, which helped us a lot because we are not, at the end of the day, we're not a big team, so we need to be clever with how we work. So here, um, you can actually see that it's um, early on, it was called Smoke and Mirrors Maze. We changed the name because uh, there was this object that it was related to and so on. So we wanted there to be a separate lore for that. We often come up with 
uh, names for things because it makes it easier to talk about them. And then as we move forward and we kind of figure out the final names. When you look at it like this, it looks simple. It's really all about the execution of the animation of the environment, the shifting, the kind of different things we do with the enemies when they're spawned, how they're spawned and so on. And that creates that um, illusion of complexity uh, to the environment. So here's um, a concept image uh, from uh, Leonardo. We have this sense of repetition and symmetry and using this kind of mundane looking motel as a, as a background. Here's another one. I especially like this because it looks um, not creepy, but there's this sense of an ominous tone to it. There was this idea early on that it would have this visual theme of a hotel. Then it was connected to the movie Barton Fink, which had this kind of an eerie, strange uh, motel that is kind of like falling apart a bit, like literally. Uh, so we took that as a kind of a starting point for the whole thing. So here's the kind of visual aesthetic for the environment. Using symmetry uh, through the entire game uh, felt just right from the get-go. And, and me and Sam, when we concepted this game, uh, right after Quantum Break, we talked about Kubrick and the kind of a careful uh, approach to the camera. Everything has meaning that you see in the image and there's a sense of balance between things. Symmetry plays a big part of that. It's something that I also personally feel like is at the essence of the aesthetic of control overall as a game. When you see a shot of uh, control with symmetry, you kind of recognize that it is control without even realizing it. And, uh, and that's what I think is important. There's this sense of visual identity. You don't see symmetry in life that often. And when it's artificially built like this, it creates a sense of unease. That's also a huge part of what we wanted to do in the game, that symmetry plays that kind of emotional role as well. Right, so what we're looking at now is early uh, footage of a prototype that we did. Everything is white boxed. So we have this kind of a simple environment uh, and some kind of a basic lighting so that we can actually tell the shapes from each other, can understand the, uh, the structure of the environment and so on. I think we're using uh, Chuck Joyce's animations actually from, from Quantum, uh, early placeholder stuff. So yeah, he, he, he looks a bit uh, weird. But here you can see the early uh, visuals and um, how we started to put it together. Again, it's the, the maze was about opening up opportunities and closing them off, subverting expectations type of thing happening, keeping you on your toes a bit, trying to uh, kind of see what is happening in the environment and what to react to and what not to react to. It is extremely strange to watch this footage, uh, to be honest. I'm a very visual person. I, I think in a visual way, I use references a lot, I use concepts a lot. I look a lot about images that convey the end result that we want to achieve. It's always weird to work in a white boxing phase because you kind of, um, you seal off that thinking, you have to. You need to look at the structure and, and kind of focus on what are the important bits right now, today. And then at the back of your head, you think a bit about, okay, what is the overall uh, experience from an aesthetic perspective that we want to achieve later on? and make sure that it doesn't become impossible with the decisions that you do today. It's, it's a complex thing that you need to be aware of at all times. And also, just for the sake of sanity of the team, you need to keep them focused as well. Like, let's just worry about this thing today. Tomorrow we'll worry about other things. And as you go forward, you build this understanding of what you're creating. As I said before, creativity is a process. Like, you don't, you have some ideas, you have a direction initially. This is what I want to do. But as you start working on it, you kind of course correct. You realize that actually this thing that I was thinking about before doesn't make sense or it doesn't work. It's, it's not good, but it's better like this instead. So you keep shifting things and so you build this understanding. You build this big mountain, this big building for yourself. Like this is the experience that we had as you work on it. And you go through that for three years and you look at the game, it gets better and better and better. And, uh, and uh, towards the end, you kind of tune these little, little details and uh, so it's, it's a bit of a shock, to be honest, to go back this kind of uh, two years and see, oh, damn, this is what we started with. Wow. And it, it makes you pause always because you kind of built that understanding for yourself and, uh, and the kind of cathartic moment almost. Uh, and, and fun as well because uh, it makes you feel proud 
like what you can do. Here's an awesome moment where you could already see uh, early on that this is gonna be cool. Uh, this kind of a sense of uh, transforming the environment in an unexpected way. There is this kind of a feeling of uh, not knowing how to react to what's going on. And, and there's like this few seconds of panic that you might have, like, what do I do? And so, and that felt great. And that's exactly what we wanted to get out from the shifting maze. And here you can see like, again, the sense of not moving through the flow in a way that you expect that the opening is actually at the ceiling and not, you know, at your level and then finding your way through there. I think a huge part of the magic for, for the maze is that there is certain kind of uh, simplicity to the structure of it. You never see that complicated setups and, and that was a huge part of uh, like the overall direction of it. If we started to make it too complicated, then that started to kind of take away the narrative of what it was. Obviously, it's not the real motel. It's just a strange dimensional expression of something that is constructed out of nothing. The point was that it's kind of using this uh, visuals of a motel in, um, in a wrong way and a, like stretch way and so on. I'm sure many people remember the moment where you come into a room and then there were like a number of enemies that appear roughly over here. And then we actually close the, the kind of a walls in front of them. So you're like, should I? Oh, I shouldn't. And then you just kind of move on. Again, subverting expectations. And this, I'm sure people recognize towards the end, a big vertical space. Again, it's all about creating uh, this story that you go through. And the important bit about stories is that there's a sense of evolution, progression, you move on to the next space and there needs to be something new, something that surprises you. So we, here we have um, a version of the maze a bit later, not much. Compared to the previous footage, here you can see a bit more elaborate uh, effects being used for the shifting. It feels a bit more three-dimensional and you can see uh, the different kind of uh, the symmetry like of different elements moving at the same pace and so on. Again, creating that sense of unnatural motion. You start to see hints of what it will become later. The, the basic principle is that there's this feeling of an unfolding. Uh, it's not quite like the shifting you see elsewhere in the building because this is a bit of a different thing. It creates this strange reaction to you, like the, this kind of layers of elements kind of are moving and together uh, it works beautifully. But again, symmetry is important to us. And there's this um, kind of a layering that is happening here as well to create that three-dimensional feel. What's clever about this is that with this number of different smaller VFX elements, we can create epic feeling moments regarding the shifting. So I was a bit worried about uh, natural elements that will it look weird, like a, like a door or something, like a detail, like will it fold in a way that looks broken? But no, it doesn't. It looks fantastic. I didn't personally think about the shifting that much early on. To me, it was this strange maze that you have to get through. Uh, but once I saw the VFX test, for instance, from Vlad, it, it kind of transformed a bit as an experience and it kind of bumped up a bit amongst all the different missions that we were doing. So here we have uh, the final kind of version of the maze. And you can see how many of the things have come together. And you can see a lot of familiar moments. There was this kind of part of creating expectations, setting up a situation. You actually have like five doors next to each other and so on. And each one keeps opening up and there's this little kind of moment of like, I wonder what's going to be revealed behind it. I mean, this is a fairly straightforward action mission at the end of the day. And yes, early on we were thinking about puzzles or, you know, maybe have multiple different routes and maybe you take that route or the other one. As we worked on it and kind of uh, taking the music into account and trying to get a feel of what are we doing overall, there's this simple kind of phrase that we use like less is more, like let's just focus on the essential thing. Let's leave out elements that makes you pause and think about things that are necessarily not the focus right now. The focus is to have this energetic battle, this fight through this complex shifting place. And, uh, and just leave everything else out. And ultimately, all the different things that we do here are relatively simple. They just look complex. That's just a testament to how clever, how good of a job the team did with not a lot of time 
and make it work in a beautiful fashion. We didn't have to follow any normal world rules. We can have boxes like this they, that don't make any sense. We can bring them in, we can make them go away, allowing us to create a very dynamic, um, unexpected yet at the same time expected environment. So the team could have a lot of fun with that and create moments that maybe weren't that common in the, in the normal flow of the game. Here again we can see us kind of using some kind of a basic motifs of with the lights. You can see it connecting to the button thing thing. We have the shoes here, sense of symmetry. You're getting to this kind of a default visual of where you are, what is this place. When I started to see like the first versions where all of the different assets that we had been creating for months, finally being there in the environment with the right lighting. Yeah, I almost cried. It was, it's just like, it looked so great. It looked perfect with that strong visual tone that we wanted to have with this game. Something that stood out compared to everybody else. We're doing our own thing, our own unique IP. So it was <laughs> super exciting. Very nerve wracking as well, uh, but huge part of why I think we all do this job. And again, what I love about this environment is it's so simple. It's just rows of doors going into darkness. It's kind of uh, feels different and it feels strong in its simplicity. And now we're out from the maze. We did it, we got through it. And I just want to talk how important it is for Remedy that it's a team effort. So it's a lot of people coming together, working together, figuring things out, overcoming problems, and uh, each one is needed to really create something exceptional. Uh, so here we have Vladislav from the left, uh, who was the VFX artist. Then we have Mikko working on music, and, and he and Martin, who is next to me on the right, they were basically the magicians who kind of figured out how to handle that song in a way that adapts to what the player is doing. If the player stops, the music kind of just works with that. Most people probably don't even realize it, how complex that is to make it sound natural, but it kind of just works. And these two guys were behind that. Then there's Anne-Marie, uh, she is the uh, level designer, basically responsible of figuring the flow out and, and kind of taking all the different bits and pieces, making them come together. And a lot of the orchestration of the different events, that's by her as well. She also did many of the simple floor animations and so on. So, she was essential to put all of these different things together. Then we have Marcel, who's the environment artist, and then Leonardo, who's the concept artist. Um, so Leonardo early on basically put those images together to kind of illustrate the overall aesthetic, the sense of the, you know, the vertical elements, the symmetry, the tone that the motel brings to the environment and all of that stuff. And then Marcel is the environment artist. And Leonardo and Marcel together worked a lot to figure all these different bits uh, together and um, must are basically responsible for actually implementing it. I think the maze overall is a, is a successful exercise from an aesthetic uh, perspective as well because I did think that if you would show even a small bit of this environment to anybody who's played it, they, they immediately know, like, yes, that's the maze. And it can be a tiny detail or a bigger thing. The art director, Janne Polkina, together with the VFX team, the environment artist, did uh, a fantastic job. It stood McDonald as well, who was the well designed director, the person who kind of came up with all these little details, how different things work, um, the doors, the shoes, all of that stuff. Again, a lot of people coming together, creating something unique. The, the popularity of the maze and the reception of the maze surprised us a bit. And to be honest, I'm not sure why, because we should have known already. Uh, but still, we, we kind of caught off guard a bit. But it, it kind of verified to us that what we're doing as, a, as an independent small studio, it's important that we stick to things that belongs to us and kind of are things that only we are doing out there and, and believe in that and, and not kind of make the mistake of shying away from something that might be a bit strange or a bit too whimsical and so on. And instead be ready to embrace that and, and trust that and players will always get it. They will always have fun. They will always appreciate when we're doing something different that is refreshing and fun and, and pure in, in many ways. And it kind of got reaffirmed, I think, in a way that yes, that's the case. And I think it will 
act as, as guidance for us in the future as well. Stick to our guns and, and be who we are and not shy away from that.